previously on Heartland. I'm thinking I should really stick with Hubbard. And I think you should too. Not gonna happen. I already quit. But you gotta make a choice. Him or me. Are you back with him? He's exactly the same. And you and me, we are exactly the same. We keep having this conversation over and over again. You hated every minute of that trip to France. Jack. I went on the trip, Lise. What else do you want from me? You're here, and I'm there. We should take a break. Chuck wagon horses on the phone, I was thinking bigger horses. Yeah, well, the regular trucks are all right, but this is a lot more fun if you ask me. Well, yeah, they sure were fast. Yep, what they lack in size, they make up for in speed. This here's my four best horses, but I got another team that isn't performing so well. You see, I got one big problem. Well, more like one miniature problem. That's Bug. He's a nice looking horse, but he's throwing off the entire team. Well, have you tried ground driving him with the lead horse? Yeah, I've tried everything. Nothing seems to make any difference. A bug was sired by one of my fastest horses, so I know he's made of the right stuff. He's just not reaching his potential. <laughs> he's a pretty friendly little guy. Yeah, you got that right. Follows people around like a puppy dog. But I got no use for a pet. I need you to transform Bug into a winner. You think you're up to that? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Excuse me, I have to take this. Lily, hi, what's going on? You're doing a good job there, sweetie. Not getting involved, Amy. Come on, Ty, your mom sounded really worried. I think you should at least go talk to him. I'll go with you. No, no way. If I go, and that's a big if, I'm going alone. So Ty's starting vet school soon, and I promised Amy I would throw him this dinner party, so I'm going to need you to go to the grocery store so I can finally get some work done around here. Sure, I can do that. Thank you, Mallory. You are a lifesaver. But I can do so much more than that. Why don't you let me organize Ty's dinner? That way you can concentrate on work and I can concentrate on creating dinner party magic. I don't know, Mallory. It's a lot of responsibility. I am fully capable of putting up some decorations and putting a roast in the oven. Plus, Kitty's going to be at her grandparents, so I don't have to worry about babysitting. I can totally do this. All right. But I can't risk anything going wrong. So first things first. We need to be in constant communication. From now on, you're going to sleep and you eat wearing this earpiece. Got it? Got it. And you're going to need to find an assistant because being in charge is all about delegating. Who do I delegate to? I am so hungry. Normally, I'd say I could eat a horse, but I can't say that anymore. Georgie, clear your schedule. Huh?
water pump shot. And the generator's not looking too good. Neither is the carburetor. Be tough finding parts for a 57. Yeah, I can get them online. That's going to be pricey. Luckily for you, I got a friend who can help out. Free. No, I bet you do. Nah, Ty, it's not like that. This is a legit friend. Oh, I bet he is. Hey, man, you don't want my help. That's fine. Why don't you tell me what you're doing up here? My mom called. Oh, yeah? Checking up on me? <laughs> I gotta tell you, I find that so satisfying, knowing she's out there twitching, especially after she broke things off with me with no explanation. She's worried about you. Well, you can report back to her that I've never been happier. Boss has got me working out here for a few days, so you change your mind about those parts, you know where to find me. No, 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 Valerie, you have to go today. Yeah, before the bakery closes. Okay, yes, bye. So you're gonna talk on the phone all day, or are you gonna talk to me? I'm sorry, but I did tell you this would be a working lunch. I have a lot going on today. Oh. What? Jerk alert. Well, look who it is. Tim Fleming. Oh, hi, Dan. I haven't seen you for a while. Remember my daughter, Lou? Hi, Dan. Hi, Lou. You know, I haven't seen your father around the track lately. I guess he never did manage to come up with a winning horse. Well, I'm not in the race business anymore, Dan. I decided to follow the money back to my herd of cattle. Never should have left them in the first place. Well, I could have told you that, Tim. I mean, this racehorse business, it's not for the faint of heart. Or for the fiend wallet. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> oh, excuse me. I believe that guy. You know, Dan is the one man in Hudson who has more money than Lanny Barrack. If he wasn't Lisa's ex-husband, I would totally go after his business. You land a big fish like Dan, Lanny Barrack and his buddies will fall right in soup. I know. But I could never do that to Grandpa. I mean, he can't stand the guy. I've never met someone I dislike so much I couldn't take their money. No, no. You know what? It's a bad idea, and I am just going to forget about it. You're right. That sounds like you. I swear I will never say the name Dan Hartfield ever again. Dan Hartfield. What? It's just an idea, and I wouldn't even think of pursuing him as a client without your blessing. Why would you need me to bless that? Because he's Lisa's ex-husband. And I know there's a lot of water under that bridge, so. You do what you want. <laughs> really? That guy means nothing to me. Never did. So you go to town on that. Thank you. Can't believe this. Spent the last of my savings getting the truck towed. Now how am I going to get it fixed? Sorry about your truck. Hey, um. What happened with Wade? Did you end up seeing him? Yeah. And? And nothing. He's fine. I already called my mom, told her there's nothing to worry about. Just wish that she didn't get you involved in that. I don't mind. She's your mom. I care about her, too. Well, one thing's for sure. I'm going to sleep better knowing that he's not in her life anymore. Oh, Lou wanted me to tell you, don't forget about the big dinner she's planning. What's the occasion? You. Me? Amy, you know I don't like those things. Come on. Bet school, you're starting in a few weeks. It's time to celebrate, you know? I haven't graduated, Amy. I still have four years, and that's if I pass. It's just dinner, right? Come on now. You worry too much. See ya. <sighs> Stupid truck. Don't worry, Lou. I picked up everything on the list. I'm carrying in the groceries as we speak. Everything is right on schedule. No, you're amazing. OK, bye. No, you're amazing. Not now, Georgie. I'm concentrating. It's my responsibility to execute Lou's vision for this dinner perfectly. And how important to Lou's vision is the cake? Because we never did stop at the bake. Oh, I forgot. And it closes in a half an hour.
What? Did I say we were taking a break? I don't recall you being in the bar. Why? It's your hay you haul it. Oh, somebody got up on the wrong side of the bed. I was just fine until I saw you. It's like watching a cow chewing her cud. You're all riled up because Lou's gone into business with Dan. Dan who? You know damn well who I'm talking about, Jack. Why don't you just go back to chewing and leave me alone? No, why don't we have this out right now? Because I'm tired of your mood swings. You're either going through some kind of male menopause or something happened with Lisa. You ought to mind your own business. Oh, come on. You got to talk to somebody about this, Jack. It might as well be me. You're the last person on this planet that I would confide in. I hurt me. Good, because it was your advice that got me into this mess in the first place. What do you mean? I was going to tell Lisa how I really felt about being in France, but you said, no, don't rock the boat. I said that? So I didn't, which was stupid, because we had one hell of a fight, and now she's gone. She left me. Are you happy? No. No. I'm sorry. You took my advice. With my track record? Shut up. Oh, look at these guys. They're so cool. Can we ride one tomorrow? No, you can't ride one. Bug here has some issues that I'm working on. Why? What's wrong with them? Well, see, he refuses to cooperate with Spike here, the lead horse, and I've been ground driving them all day. And it just doesn't work. He's not listening. Maybe it's like herding cattle. Just need patience, knowledge of the flight zone, and a bit of bovine psychology. Yeah, I don't know if that applies to horses. But since you're so eager to help, why don't you give me a hand taking this off and we'll put them away? Gladly. Especially if it means I can get away from Mallory. She's driving me nuts. I'm sure she is. <laughs> Ah, oh, look who's here. What's the matter, Ty? You missed me already? I wouldn't be here if I had any other option. What can I do for you? I need the name of your friend who collects the old trucks. Can't get the parts online. You know, usually when somebody asks me for a favor, they say, please. Since you asked me so nicely, I'll see what I can do for you. All I need is a number, Wade. You know, my buddy Daryl, he's a little on the eccentric side. Probably better I do the talking. You know what? Forget it. Hey, come on. You know the parts or not? Happy retirement, Larry? Who's Larry? Stay out of there. Jill, I was just looking. I barely made it to the bakery on time yesterday. They were just locking the door as I arrived. I had to practically beg them to give me the cake that Lou special ordered. She would have freaked if I messed this up. Actually... And I noticed you haven't done the vacuuming in the living room yet. I have to tell you something. Less talking, more vacuuming. And after that, I need you to unload the dishwasher, set the table, put up the decorations, and pick wildflowers for the centerpiece. Okay? Sounds like a lot of work, but it'll all be worth it when I see everyone's face when you serve dessert. Well, this uh, certainly is rustic. My company may be small, but I can assure you that you'll have access to the same financial products as you would with a larger firm. I know, I know. With the added bonus of a competitive fee base. Lou, you can stop there. Lisa cannot say enough good things about your financial skills. And believe me, I know how hard she is to impress. So, I'm willing to give you 10% of my portfolio. Really? You make me some real money, and we'll talk more later. Thank you, Dan. This is an amazing opportunity, and I won't let you down. OK. I'll have my accountants send over the necessary information. Oh, and you should know that uh, Lisa and I will be keeping our finances separate, at least for now. Mm-hmm. Um, isn't that a given, considering you guys are divorced? Yes, but uh, now that we've reconciled, um, you know, we may be pooling our resources. Uh-huh. We'll see you. Okay. What are you doing here? 
Oh, come on now. Is that any way to greet the man who just solved all your problems? You got the parts? Yeah, I got the parts. Well, sort of. We gotta go pick him up. Come on, let's go, Fleming. What are you waiting for? Just give me the address, wait. I'll get the parts on my own. Oh, no, man. You'll never find it. It's way in the middle of nowhere. Come on. Let's get in. Tick tock. All right. Forget about it. Hold on. Hold on. Now you're talking. Where are we going? Way out by Greer Lake. That's three hours from here. That's all right. I'll drive fast. Don't worry about it. Let's go. Get your leg in. Daryl swore there'd be a 57 around here somewhere. I thought you said he was a collector. It's just a bunch of junk. You know what they say. One man's junk is another man's treasure. Uh, jackpot right there. Yeah, it looks like the right year. Mm -hmm. What did I tell you? Yeah, well, who knows what condition the engine's in. Actually, that's in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. Might not be a waste of time after all. Don't look so surprised. Let's get to work. I cannot believe that Lisa and Dan are back okay, together. Don't go over the deep end here. I have to tell Grandpa. No, no. This is not the kind of news that your Grandpa wants to hear from his granddaughter. So what am I supposed to do? So you're just supposed to keep it under your hat. What? Hey. Hi, Grandpa. You're here. You, you look good. <laughs> are, you, are you wearing a new shirt? No. No? It must be new boots, hey? No. Oh. Hmm. You're acting weird. Stop it. <laughs> I'm acting weird. What's wrong with you? I can't keep secrets from Grandpa. I'm sorry. I have to tell him. No, no. No. It'll be better if he hears the news from me. Okay, you're right. You guys mm. can commiserate. I mean, your love life actually sucks worse than his does. No, that's not what I meant. No, it does. Thank you. It's a good effort. I just think in events like this, less is more. Plus, I think the banner should go on that side of the room. And these wildflowers, they look like weeds. That's because they are weeds. You did a nice job on the vacuuming. I just think I'm going to have to redo everything else. You know what, Mallory? You can redo the vacuuming, too. What is your problem? You are. And you know what? From now on, you're on your own. Come on. Come on. What's going on with you, Bob? Why can't you just follow Spike's lead, huh? What am I doing wrong? I can't take it anymore. She's a demon monster. Not now, Georgie. You won't believe what Mallory just did. Can't you see that I'm busy? Yeah. Why don't you just follow Mallory's lead for once? Because I'm not a horse. Georgie. And remember, if we see the bear, just scare it away. I don't want you getting trigger happy. Yeah, well, Jack, I lied about the bear. Then why am I out here? Well, I thought we'd shoot some targets like the old days. I don't have time for this. Some of us have actual work to do. Well, look at, look at, just hang on a second. This is really good. You know, it's, it's a good way to blow off steam. You got something on your chest? Romantically speaking? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have told you about Lisa. This is none of your business. Just a second, Jack. I got something to say. Then say it. Okay. I hate to be the one that has to say this. But the other day, when Lou got together with Dan, he made it sound like he and Lisa were getting back together.
Okay. What happened? I, I fell. But I'm okay. No, you're not okay. Get you inside. Thanks, Bob. Generator, water pump, carburetor, distributor. I got everything I need plus backups. Yeah, I told you. Daryl always delivers. Now, where is he, anyways? I should probably thank him. Never mind about that. We should, uh, we should get going here. Okay, well, give me a hand with this. Oh, oh crap. Come on, get in here. What, what, what is that? It's a dog. I know it's a dog. What's it doing out there? Why didn't Daryl tie him up? Daryl doesn't exactly know we're here. I thought you said he was a friend of yours. He is a friend of mine, but... He's in Arizona right now, and I couldn't get a hold of him. I knew he'd be fine with us coming out here and helping ourselves. I just forgot about the dog. I knew it. I knew coming here with you was a bad idea. Just relax. You got a cell phone, right? Call up your vet buddy. Tell him to get out here with a tranquilizer gun. It's in my hoodie. I think the dog just ate it for lunch. <sighs> The good news is, I'm pretty sure it's just a sprain. But if it gets any worse, it hurts a lot, we'll take you to the clinic, OK? Are you mad at me? No. I'm not mad at you. But there is a reason why I told you not to ride those horses. I was mad at Mallory, and I guess I just wasn't thinking. I'm really sorry. It's OK. I'm sorry I snapped at you. I can't figure out what's going on with Bug, and I was just really frustrated. What will happen if you can't solve his problem? I don't know. His owner might have to sell him. That's too bad. He really helped me today. I know. He's a pretty special little horse. OK, I'll make you a deal. I won't give up on Bug if you promise you won't give up on Mallory. I promise. Deal. <laughs> Where did he go? I can hear him. Okay, I got a plan. Daryl got this dog in the late 90s. He's probably pretty old and deaf now. I say all we do is wait for him to fall asleep, then we make a run for it. That's your plan. You got a better one, let's hear it. No, I don't, but that doesn't mean yours stinks any less. I don't care how old that dog is. As soon as we open that door, he's going to hear us. Oh, give me a break, will you? I, I didn't know this was going to happen. Every time I get involved with you, Wade, something goes wrong. Every time. I was trying to help you out. I had the best of intentions. I did. Oh, I'm sure you did. But I just can't win with you, can I? No matter what I do, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm always going to be the boogeyman to you. That's right. Except you're real. <laughs> I get it, Ty. I was a crap stepdad, I know. But you, you were no ray of sunshine yourself there. We both made our share of mistakes. Okay, I can't listen to this. Are you nuts? Okay, 
feel like I'm stuck in here with you. Yeah, well, it's no picnic for me either. Jack. Oh. It's good to see you. Hello, Dan. So I hear you want to lose new clients. Actually, she just called to inform me that she's too busy to take on new clients. Hmm. Which is odd, because I'm pretty sure that I was her only client. If Lou's looking to run her business right into the ground, she's off to a good start. Well, maybe you were too small potatoes for her. Excuse me? Hard not to take it personally, I know. But Lou is exceptional at what she does, and her dance card's probably pretty full. She might have moved on a little too quickly, but that happens sometimes, doesn't it? Have a good day. refuses to cooperate with the lead horse. I've, I've tried ground driving him, I've switched up his feed, but nothing seems to work. Yeah, he's a stubborn little bugger, isn't he? He is. It's funny, he, he doesn't really seem to like the company of other horses, but he loves people. Yeah, it's because of my daughter, Emma. She loves to spoil the horses. The bug is her favorite. And she used to bottle feed him when he was a foal. The bug's too well bred to be a pet. Keep trying, okay? I will do. Come on, Emma, time to go. You got it? All right. Some jerky? No, I don't. Why do you want to keep that old truck anyway? Seems to cause you more problems than it's worth. Look, man, I know this trying to talk and be civil thing isn't easy. Fine. Uh, I got that truck just before I came to Heartland. Because of some memories, then. Yeah. Care to elaborate? <sighs> um, there was this one time I uh, went to this party that Amy was at right after I got to Heartland. And I ended up punching out some guy. And uh, Amy didn't like that too much, so she left, started walking home, and I followed her. Picked her up on the side of the road, and uh, she gave me a hard time because I didn't have any heat in my truck. There was no heater. <laughs> Who was the guy you punched out? He was her boyfriend at the time. <laughs> I guess that worked out pretty well for you then, didn't it? Why do you think a nice girl like Amy wants to hang out with a guy like you? I ask myself that every day. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. Hmm. You know, you're probably not going to believe this, but I feel the same way about your mom. She always made me want to be a better man all around. Took me too long to realize that, though, I think. Hell, yeah, way too long. I asked her to marry me again. She said she wanted to think about it for a while. And she ended up saying no. That was that. Well, I guess you and me got something in common then. I asked Amy to marry me. And she didn't really say no, but we, uh, we agreed to wait. Wait for what? Uh, I don't know, just, uh, just wait. You hear that? He 
You stop barking. Yeah, it must be sleeping. I think he's gone. All right, let's get out of here. What about the parts? What about the dog? I'm not leaving without him. What happened to you? Never mind. I need to tell you something. Okay? I'm not just some kid you can push around. I know. I'm sorry. You are? I realize now that I may have gone a little overboard. All right. A lot overboard. I just wanted everything to be perfect. Somewhere along the way, I'd realized that I'd turned into Lou, only worse. I was drunk with power, but it was all in the pursuit of greatness. Okay, you don't have to lay it on so thick. I accept your apology. Good. So you won't mind redoing the vacuuming in the living room? Actually, I have to show you something first. Happy retirement, Larry! They gave me the wrong cake! You think? Lou's gonna kill me. Don't worry, we can fix this. How? I watched every cake decorating show on TV. I'm practically an expert. But you have to do exactly what I say. Oh, this is a bad time. You're working. Mm -mm. I'm updating my blog. Come in, sit down. Yeah, it should be working. That would require actually having clients. Well, that's what I need to talk to you about. I want you to call Dan and tell him you want his business back. Grandpa. I won't let you sacrifice your company because you're worried about my ego. I don't need Dan. I know how much his business would be worth to you. Yeah, it would. But you're worth more to me, so stop telling me what to do. It's my decision, not yours. That's enough about work. I haven't talked to you in a while, and I want you to tell me how you're doing. No. I'm all right. The other day, I swore I saw Lisa walking down the street. And then it turned out not to be her after all. about this? Well, my mom used to know this woman who trained horses to be guide animals. Like seeing eye dogs except horses? Yeah, yeah, exactly. When I found out that Robert's daughter was blind, it just made sense. Wait, weren't you hired to make Bug into a chuck wagon horse? Yeah, but I think he's capable of so much more. I just have to prove it. Wade really came through, huh? Yeah. And he almost got us killed in the process. He did help, right? And he didn't ask for anything in return. What's your point, Amy? 
I just think with everything that's happened, maybe it's time to consider the possibility Wade isn't the same guy he used to be. Just because he acted like a human for five minutes doesn't mean he's any different. He, your mom believed that he'd changed. That's why she got back together with him. And then she broke it off, Amy. Probably because she realized he's the same destructive person that he always was. That's not true. Lily told me why she turned down Wade's marriage proposal. She was scared, but not of Wade. She was scared of losing you. She said that. Yeah. She thought if she married Wade, then, then you'd never talk to her again. She broke it off because of you. Never heard of a CNI horse before. Buck has all the qualities of a perfect guide animal. In my opinion, he was born to do this. I don't know, it just don't seem right to me. I want to show you something. All right, Emma, you can start walking. You don't need to be afraid. Bug will take care of you. Horses with the right temperament can make great guard animals. Since Emma has grown up around horses, I figure it's just about perfect. Now, there are people who specifically train miniature horses to be guide animals. So if you want, I can make a few calls. One thing's for sure. Bug's a lousy chuck wagon horse. <laughs> well, if this is what he's meant to do, I'm all for it. Look at her go. You're doing great, honey. Atta girl. Way to go, Emma. Got your message. Say it, Wade. Yeah. Love your mother very much. Okay. Go back to Vancouver then. Tell her I won't stand in her way anymore. What made you change your mind? Uh. I guess I realize I'm a little too old to believe in the boogeyman. This is very impressive. It was your vision, Lou. I simply brought it to life. It's good but I have notes. I'm not sure about the carnations. I'm thinking wildflowers. And the banner should really be on that side of the room. I told you. Ooh, this must be the cake I ordered. Don't you want to wait for the big reveal at the end of dinner? Are you kidding? This cake cost a fortune. I want to see what it looks like. Hmm. Mallory. I know. I'm sorry. I screwed up. Well, I mean, with a fabulous cake like this, we should really be using the silver platter, don't you think? You're right. My bad. OK, let's check on your progress in the kitchen. Hmm. Well, well, 
You got your truck fixed. Yeah. As good as new. Thanks to Wade. So you talked to him then? Yeah, he's on his way back to Vancouver right now. I'm not a kid anymore, Amy. All that stuff is, uh, it's behind me now. Can't hurt me anymore. Well, I think this occasion calls for a speech from the future Dr. Borden. No, I don't do speeches, guys. Come on, just a few inspiring words before you embark on the most important academic journey of your life. Right. No pressure, huh? Come on, Ty. OK. Um... <clears throat> uh, first of all, I'd like to say that um, I can't believe that you guys went to all this trouble just for me. Um, this is amazing. I should be the one making dinner for you. After all, I wouldn't be starting vet school in a few weeks if it wasn't for the people around this table right now. So, thank you. All of you. Well, we couldn't be more proud, Ty. And I think that deserves a toast. To kicking butt in vet school. To kicking butt. Kicking butt. To kicking butt. <laughs> kicking butt. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Okay, everyone dig in. Don't hesitate to tell me how great everything is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is where you are. You disappeared after dinner. Are you all right? Yeah. I guess I'm just happy. Is that why you're crying? <laughs> I was thinking, Ty used to be the boy in the loft. And sometimes I still think of him that way. But he grew up. I mean, he is this amazing young man now. And he's the kind of man that I always thought I'd spend my life with. And when he asked me to marry him, I said I wanted to wait. But, but, I don't know what I'm waiting for. 